Hong Kong's startup scene is combining innovation and entrepreneurial spirit with universities and laboratories, coupled with the industrial might of the Greater Bay Area. In this edition of Spotlight Hong Kong, we talk with key players that are part of that startup ecosystem, and we'll see how Hong Kong is investing in that potential. At Hong Kong's Science and Technology Park, research clusters called InnoHK are developing global collaboration. Health at InnoHK focuses on healthcare, and air at InnoHK on AI and robotics technologies. Joining us to talk about it is Nancy Ip of the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Nancy, you're head of the university's Center for Neurodegenerative Diseases. How is Science Park helping you work with the University College of London and Stanford University? One project that we collaborate on um, is developing a, a blood-based biomarker test for Alzheimer's disease. So this is a very exciting project for us because it really illustrates the power of collaborations uh, among the three institutions. With the aging population worldwide, neurodegenerative diseases, given that it is an age-related diseases, uh, the prevalence has been increasing substantially. And how does your work fit into Hong Kong's startup ecosystem? Well, I think the Hong Kong Science Park has provided uh, the much-needed infrastructure for innovation and technology development. These biotech startups, uh, they, they can achieve a lot of synergy by interacting uh, with each other in the science park. Then there's AIR at InnoHK, involving people like Helen Meng at the Center for Perceptual and Interactive Intelligence, part of the Chinese University of Hong Kong. They work with MIT and others in developing wearable electronics. They can use it for rehabilitation, or we can also use it in sports, in sports training for athletes, where the sensors that are embedded in the garment can be used to measure the motions of the athlete in training. Seizing on the opportunities at Science Park, French-based Invivogen is there, designing tools for cutting-edge bio-research. Let's talk to Xiaobing Li, the company's chief business officer in Hong Kong. Hi, Xiaobing. Can you show us an example? And here I will pick up one example. It's our reporter cell line. It's the cells actually in the devices. And you use that for? Vaccine development. And here, after vaccination, and the authors use our reporter cell lines to test the uh, immune response after the vaccine uh, jab. And to make those testing tools, you need high tech to do it, right? We have to use the flow cytometer. The devices can be uh, as expensive as half million euro. But in, here in Science Park, they provide the flow cytometer. So where does Science Park go from here? Let's talk with its CEO, Albert Wong. Hello, Albert. The Hong Kong Science and Technology Corporation, or HKSTP for short, is now 20 years old with a thousand companies. What now? And we need to grow exponentially by leveraging on our basic strengths, including basic research and access to market. All my life, I've been working in uh, multinationals and mostly Western companies, and uh, I spent a number of years in a very big company. I work in the M&A and management of companies. The commonality is, number one, is that um, there's limited resources and you need to do the maximum out of it. So the how does Science Park address that? Electronic labs, biomedical labs, data, robotics, AI. Even we go into virtual labs so that people can come in. They do not need to buy all this expensive equipment and they can start doing their technology research and development right away. And then you've got the market for products, right? In the greater Bay Area around Hong Kong. 80 million population within a uh, one or two hour um, traveling zone. This is uh, a huge opportunity. But also, it, Hong Kong can play a role in bringing out technology from China or Hong Kong into the uh, Southeast Asia area. That does sound like a winning combination. Thanks very much, Albert. That's all for now on Spotlight Hong Kong. You can see this and other episodes on Euronews.com. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.